In dealing with Onward, he mentioned this, and I wanted to say this to you. I didn't know when I'd have a, a great time to do it. But the enemy, and Eddie and I just talked about this, the enemy wants to shut down the church. And I thank God for live stream. I thank God, thank God for Facebook. But I more thank God for live. Amen. That I can be live. I would hate to uh, uh, zoom in Saltgrass Steakhouse and they slide that ribeye across there and let me see it online. Amen. And then you got a little blooming onion out of the outback, you know. And I think I would be very disappointed if I wasn't able to be there and, and to enjoy that, the ambiance of a ribeye or a blooming onion. So it's just good to be here tonight. The enemy wants to shut down the church. He had, he want, last year was a great opportunity for him. It didn't happen for the little country church. Can you get an amen? But there are three things that can stop us from going onward, for pressing onward. Three very quick things. First, I will tell you, is the spirit of sideways. Always moving sideways and never going anywhere. David, you mentioned this day, and it brought it back to my remembrance. Uh, there's a place called Rodney, Mississippi. Anybody ever heard of it? Yeah. It was once You've heard of Rodney, Mississippi? It was once known as the Little Gulf. Rodney, Mississippi was known for cotton. It said right there along the river in the, uh, the, uh, the delta in Mississippi. And that little town grew. And everybody came there. But what happened over the next 25, 30 years, the river shifted. And it moved three miles away from them. And because it went sideways, the river did, the people never moved to the river. And because of that, now it's desolate. Sometimes you've got to move when God says move. Amen. Or you end up being a Rodney, Mississippi. Second, the spirit of backwards. The Pharisees wanted Jesus to always go backwards. And all through Scripture, there's this desire for people to go back to their past. I told you Sunday that a man with no future always reverts back to his past. Some of you young people, you hadn't even got a really good past yet. But one day you'll get old enough and you'll say to yourself, man, you know, I'd, I'd like to go back to that. I, I think I said to you, as some folk got their head so far up their past, they can't see their future. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I don't want to go back to where I came from. I want to keep pressing forward. So don't go backward. The third one was the spirit of downward depression. Being depressed. 1 Samuel 4.21 A lady had a baby. And I think she died during birth. And they named the baby Ichabod. Which means the glory has departed. You know, there I found that... Uh, we attach our tomorrow with how good it was yesterday, thereby, thereby ruining our today. And we'll say that again to you. We attach our tomorrow with how good it was yesterday, thereby ruining our today. Many of you were not with me um, 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I was in one of the majors, one of the biggest revivals ever hit this town. Some of you were there. And a lot of people have been looking for that again. And as a matter of fact, they get disappointed when it doesn't happen with me there. Listen, I didn't cause it to happen. I just happened to be the recipient of a man who was in the right place at the right time. Hey Amen. It exploded this little town. Right now, it's happening in Baytown. It's happening in the woodlands. It's different places. So really, there, there's a move of God. There's something happening. But on the flip side, I can't ruin my tomorrow by thinking about what happened yesterday. I look back at that season. I thank God for that season. That, Sue, that was a great season. Hey Amen. But it was a season. Hey Amen. And now we're in a new day. And a lot of you will look back at this day and say, you know what? That was some of the best days I ever had was this day. So keep moving onward. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Again, I mentioned to you that we're going to take the offering up at the end. So this ain't about me tonight. I just want to mention to you, keep on moving. I had to remind myself. I've been, I, I, I was telling uh, Josiah today, I said, I, I, what, I do what I do to get to do what I like. I said, I said, I do what I do to get to do what I like. And sometimes doing what I do means working, yeah. building, right. mowing grass, painting buildings, fixing busted pipes, going to hospitals, doing weddings, funerals. I, but I, I do what I do to get to do what I like. You know what I like? Right here. Amen. Yeah, so I, everything I do is to get to be right here. Hallelujah. I love it right here. I feel this is where God wants me. Amen. I'm so excited to have Eddie in the house. We will release any of the little children that need to slip out with whoever needs to slip out with them. I do not know who that will be. But the youth are going to be staying in here with us tonight. And everybody else who wants to hear Eddie, because I'm going to tell you something. There are those who preach and can connect with certain groups and stages of life. When Eddie was here last time, I realized this man connects with all ages. Would you welcome Eddie B? From Albuquerque, New Mexico. 
got your own mic, right? Yay, man. Yay, man. I was wondering if I was coming up. Well, it is a privilege to be back at the little country church. Amen. I even want my little. Hey. 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 Get some of that wild up in here, amen. Get some of that wild up in here. How many of y'all have never seen me before? You've never seen me before. Never seen me before. Okay. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what we do, amen. We are prison missionaries. We have been doing missionary work for the last 29 years across the United States. We started out with one prison, one turned to two, two turned to 50, 50 turned into 100. 200, God said, Eddie, I want you to quit your job and do that full time. Um, at that point, I had my wife and I had three children. Come on, somebody. I had a great job, and I was like, I ain't quitting. And I didn't. And for the next year of my life, it was the most miserable year of my life. It really was. And then after that year, I finally walked in my job, and I said, you know what? Today's my last day. And my boss said these very words to me. He said, you don't have enough faith to quit. And I said, it's not about faith at this point. It's about obedience. Right. I've been disobedient, and God told me to quit a year ago, and today is it. So I quit. 200 went to 300, 400, 500. One year we did 644 units across the United States. Just act like you're happy out there. Yeah. Just act like you're happy. Right? In the last seven years, the seven of the 29, we decided to start taking numbers because people started asking us, what are we doing, amen? And I said, okay, well, let's, let, let's, let's gauge it. You've got to gauge it somehow. You have to be able to gauge what you're doing. And so we gauged it. In the last seven years, we've seen a little over half a million people. And out of that half a million people, we've had 20,000 people accept Christ for the first time. Come on. Come on. Come on. We were in your lovely prisons today, amen. That's what we're doing now. We're doing our prisons during the day because um, they finally have lifted the lockdown, amen, for the prison systems in the state of Texas. Now, I come from New Mexico. They just now, watch this, we are just now getting off the lockdown. Yeah. I call it communist New Mexico. Yeah. I really do. And let me tell you something. It is crazy over there what they've done. Over 300 jobs just in Albuquerque alone have been shut down. Indian school road. Because, there you go, man. Because they made a decision, amen. People made a decision to destroy not only the, the, the companies there, but watch this. They tried to destroy the church. But you know what happened? I have a pastor that's a lot like your pastor. And he said, we're not shutting down. And you know what they did? They sued my pastor. They fined him $10,000 for doing a service. You know what he said? Come and arrest me. You ain't getting one penny from me. He said, I ain't paying one penny. He said, you always talk about church and state. Yet, what is state doing up in the church telling what the church wants to do? Right. And he said, they, they don't tell me what to do. And so he sued the governor of the state of New Mexico. And watch this. One for every church in the state of New Mexico. Come on, somebody. So here. I've written a lot of music, man. 46 CDs. Who's counting? I am. And, uh, <laughs> I've got a lot of hits on the radio. I've written four or five books. I got my new book out tonight called Dare to Dream When They Say No. I'm going to talk about that here in just a few, but I want to play a couple songs for you. If you like my music, I'll do a couple more. If you don't like my music, I'll preach. Yeah. And I don't care if you like my preaching, man. I, I, I like making people mad. Because, you know, you're only five or four. You can't beat very many people up, you know? But boy, when you preach, man, they, 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 they just get weird. They get all mad at you, amen, and I'm like, that's the word. Because the word is offensive. Come on. So if you preach a message and nobody's offended, I might want to guess that you're probably not preaching the word. You're probably preaching a word, but not preaching the word. So this first song I want to do for you is going to go back, amen. I'll, I'll take it easy on y'all first. I don't want to start off with any hardcore stuff, you know. Freak y'all out, amen. You, know, you start, you don't want your name yet. I'm not going to do that. I'm not I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not the young is like, yeah, dude, bring it on. Like uh, there you go. But um, I want to do this song for you called His Wounds. And I want you to picture Jesus dying on the cross as I play this song because that's how God gave me this song. He said, Eddie, picture me dying on a cross. So this song here is called His Wounds. Y'all okay tonight? Yeah. yeah. All right. Y'all let me know if it gets too loud. Uh -huh. Wrong song. <laughs> there you go. I 
couldn't tell you how he felt when the man ripped the bed from his face. I couldn't tell you how he felt when they nailed the midnight place. I couldn't tell you how he felt when they ripped the clothes from his back. Could you imagine how it feels? Sweat, blood, like that. inside this broken body of mine, amen, and then he makes me whole. And so I go around telling people, now listen, I ain't perfect, by no means, but I'm no longer broken. Amen. Yeah. Come on. I don't care what people say to me, I don't care what my mind tells me, because let me tell you something, my mind's underneath the tack sometimes, hello, and I know I'm not the only person in this room, hello, somebody. No, not me. I got the joy of the Lord all the time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody cut you off and that joy just dumped your life. Come on, somebody. But I'm not broken no more. Right, right. Come on. Come on. Because he became broken for me. And watch this. He's no longer broken either. Come on, somebody. 
Right. So I wrote this song called Broken Man. I want to just do a couple more songs for you. Get in the word tonight. Y'all like some word up in here. Got yeah. three y'all. Some of y'all came across and I seen that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Tell you some stuff. Amen. It's okay. The other day they asked me, said, Eddie, are you Pentecostal? I said, I don't even know what that means. Right. <laughs> they said, well, you know, you know, you get all excited and everything. I said, oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Is there, is there different levels of Christianity? I, right. Come on. Say it. I, I didn't really know. I didn't really understand how to, how to react to them. Right. And, I, and I said, well, l let me put it like this. You see, I used to live in the street 30 years ago. I was a drug addict. My life was tore up in and out of jail like a revolving door. And this God that you call Jesus, he showed up at my bus stop. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, Eddie, if you come to me, I'll take you places that nobody can take you. And the Lord, the King of Kings, the Lord, the, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, this is what he did for me. He healed me of my drug addiction. Took it totally out of me. Right. And so, you want to call it Pentecostal? Go ahead. Right. I call it, I've been set free. i got a reason to dance, amen, and I don't care what people got to say, amen. Come on, come on. First song I hear is called Broken Man, and then, and then, 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 yeah, then we'll change it up a little bit, amen. See, see, see if y'all like some little, I got some, I got a new CD out, amen. I'm going to play some new stuff, amen. Y'all don't mind, amen. This is new stuff. Here we go. <laughs> How many of y'all want to thank the Lord in this place here tonight that we are no longer broken? I was a broken man. I was a broken man in deep despair. Then I heard about a broken king. How the fear but bruise him. Place the brown thorns upon his head and nailed him to a cross. Took away all my sins, went to heaven back with me. He's not a broken king and can die. Yeah. 
Now, I realize that I am in uh, Texas, amen. amen. I grew up right down the street, amen, kind of sort of. I came here when I was 12 years old, amen. Uh, I, I was facing six years at 12 years old. Can you imagine that? Wow. My life had been plagued, amen, since the age of five. I did my first trip with drugs at five years old with the gangs on the corner. Yeah, I mean, I was destined to be the poster boy for not success. But Jesus, yep. he changed it all around, amen. And I remember when the Lord came to me and told me, he said, Eddie, I, I didn't make you to, to, to write music for the world. Uh, I came to make, make you write music for me. And I was like, well, what's that going to be like? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, you know, this is 30 years ago, man. Hymnal 432 was the most popular thing they had out. Come on, somebody. And I mean, I, I wasn't too sure, you know. They, and I walked into a church like this, and they said, can you sing? I said, I'll sing a little bit. And, uh, and they gave me the microphone. I'm like, you want me to sing now? They said, yeah, 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 we're well, loving good. Like, we don't sing like that. We don't, we don't sing like that. I'm like, how do y'all sing? Thy Lord, thy God, thy kingdom come. That's why you sing it around. It's like, I ain't got saved, man. I don't know what to tell you. But it's going to take a lot of saving to get that out of me, amen. Um, but um, this next song right here, um, about 10 years ago, I wrote a song that, that went all over the world. It was on the top. Uh, it, was on, uh, it was number 21 on the top on her country chart. And as you can see, I'm not country. And I think that they were doing drugs in Nashville, personally. But um, I, I decided to write—I decided to write a country song. So I figured if I write a country song, maybe maybe you'll play this on metal stations. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but um, anyway, the song's called "My Pickup Truck." I ain't never owned a pickup truck in my life. The Lord's like, "Hey, they want to write a song called Pickup Truck." I'm like, "Lord, I." He said, no, my pickup truck. I said, Lord, I, I ain't got a pickup truck. I, I, can't, I can't write something about my pickup truck. I don't got it. He said, no, Eddie, it's not your pickup truck. You are the pickup truck. We are the pickup trucks. And I said, Lord, this is going to be good. I, I said, well, well, how do you want to start the song? He said, broke down on the road again. You know what that is? That's your sin. It breaks you down. I said, now I want to change. But that black mud won't let me go nowhere. That's a sin. And then I like this one. It says, it says, pull down the tailgate. You know what that is? Pull down the tailgate. It's that, that, pull down the tailgate. Come on. Come on. Come on. Then it says, kick out the trash and have a southern revival in the back of my pickup truck. Amen. Amen. So I was sleeping 2.30 in the morning. I heard a voice, man, clear as day. He said, Eddie, get up and write this down. I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired. He said, Eddie, write this down. There is no plastic Jesus on my dashboard. I said, Lord, what in the world does that mean? He said, there is no religion in you. Right, right. Then he said, roll down the window. Let that wind rush in. That's the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to play this song for you. It's country, amen. Right. Gotta get ready for the country song, man. Come on, somebody. Hey, amen. Y'all don't mind no country up in here? Woo, sir. All right, here we go. I got a pickup truck broke down on the road. It's in my nature, they say. I got that bad luck. Oh, I want to change what they say about me. But that black butt won't let me go nowhere. So I pull down the tailgate and I kick out the trash. Sorry. He said, 
Now over the years you slipped and grind them gears Help them open up Then wipe this can't stop them tears So I get on my knees And I got so my grandma She said you need to pray So you can be set free So I pull down my tailgate And I kick down the trash You are so kind. Thank you for letting me feel like I'm at home. Amen? Amen. Like family, right? Yeah. You know, I walk into some churches, they don't treat me like family at all. Amen? <laughs> and I'm like, Lord, I don't even think they're saved. <laughs> so I do a salvation call no matter what. Some people may get saved more than once, man. <laughs> on the dunking part, they should have just kept them on. Come on, somebody. If something didn't work. Um, this next song I want to do for you, man. Uh, I, I went home last year in February when the, when, the, when the whole thing started, amen. The prison system shut down in Georgia. We were up in Georgia. We do prisons in 21 states of the United States. So seven months out of the year, amen, we are traveling in the pandemic or not. We, we, we never shut down. We, we kept on going. Now, we stayed home for a little bit, but it was very little bit. We went right back out. And we, we figured that if Martin Luther and the Black Plague said, hey, man, there's people outside of my house that need Jesus, and 60 million people died, then somebody's got to stand up and say, you know what? Somebody needs to preach the gospel regardless of what we're in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So there I was, man, and I was thinking to myself, man, I was, I was like, man, God, what do you want? Because, you know, everybody says, it's the end of the world. You know, I was like, you know, freaking out, right? And so I figured, well, it's the end of the world. Amen. Look at me. I don't eat a lot of sweets, cookies, cakes, and stuff like that. So I figured, hey, man, if it's the end of the world, I said, baby, you better make me some apple pie. I'm going out. I'm going out with some ice cream. Come on. Maybe cookies and cream, too. I mean, I pushed the limits. Come on, somebody. Come on. But after about four days, I said, Lord, you have me home for a reason. Now, what is that reason? And he said, Eddie, I want you to write a new CD. And I said, okay, Lord, what is it? He said, uh, I'm going to give you the title. God Shut the Planet Down. Yeah. And I thought, that's some inspiration right there. But I said, Lord, you've got to give me scripture to back up everything. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And so he took me to Revelation 18 and 17. It says, within one hour, God shuts the planet down. So um, uh, watch this. This was just preliminary for what's to come. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And uh, I got news for you. Watch this. Watch this. We ain't going to be there. Not, maybe you want to be there. No, I mean, Christians like that. I can't wait for the tribulation. Yeah, buddy, I'm not waiting for that. Hello, inside. I'm going with him, amen, and uh, you can hang out all you want. Yeah, let's I don't even like my toenail getting messed up. Come on, somebody. Ah! Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I, when I thought about it. I said, you know what? It's kind of weird, but when you think about this, the sun comes out in the middle of the storm. You think about that? Yeah. yeah. And I thought, you know what? Nobody's written a song like that. So I said, well, I'll write a song like that. So I'm going to need your help tonight. I know some of you are like, I don't see. 
Or nothing. We'll try it tonight, amen. He might please somebody, amen. His name is Jesus. So <laughs> thank you. Anyway, so um it goes like this. It goes, oh the sun comes out in the middle of the storm. Oh, the sun comes out in the middle of the storm. He comes out. Think y'all can handle that? Yeah. I know some. I know some of the mature folk are like, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> Got to have a little bit of tone down on that one right there, man. You get catching. No, you'll catch him. You'll, 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 you'll be just fine. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> I promise you, I won't do no heavy metal tonight, hey, amen. I promise. <laughs> y'all ready? I took so beautiful coming out of that mess When them times you feel like you're going through Shadow of death Of those things that discourage me, I have to put my eyes on all that stuff that God does for us. something like the sermons or the music, I send it to these nine people, amen, to make sure that I'm staying on track. It's good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so I finished this first song called God Shut the Planet Down, and I sent it to my board of directors, and um, I ain't never got a phone call so fast. <laughs> and the guy that called me, we call him the Gestapo on the board, amen. He, <laughs> he, he's the guy that you better make sure you, you, your ducks better be or lined up there. Lined up. And so he's been in the pulpit more than 40 years. Come on, somebody, amen. amen. And I thank God for spiritual fathers in my life, amen, yeah. Yeah. that kind of keep me straight. Because you know what? I'm going to just tell you honestly, I've made some mistakes, Pastor. <laughs> I've done some things that I shouldn't have done. Hello, somebody. Yeah. And I've had to learn, and I have to learn why. Because if, if you don't learn, and then you ain't going nowhere. Uh, right. But if you learn, and then you climb mountains. Right. Come on. 
And the Bible says, man, that wisdom, amen, get it, because it's good for you. Right. And so when I sent it to him, he immediately called me back. I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble. And this is what he said to me. He said, Eddie, I want to talk to you about that song you wrote. And I said, yes, sir. And he said, uh, you realize that they're never going to play that on any radio station in the world, right? <laughs> and I said, yes, sir. I, I kind of realize that the subject is pretty heavy. I said, but you know what the problem is, man, is that I've been in the music industry for 30 years, y'all. I've watched the music industry just dumb down in the name of Jesus. Well, yeah. Yeah. And now it's called positive music. Yeah. They don't talk about Jesus at all. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but two of my favorite artists this year, this year I found out, and I'm not going to name them, but two of my favorite artists, I found out that they believe that God could be a woman. And I'm just talking, I ain't got nothing against women, amen, but I got some, something against something that goes against the word of God that says that God is a woman, because God is not a woman. He's 100% man and 100% God, amen? amen? And so um, I, I was like, that's it. I'm not listening to them anymore. They're just not, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. So I wrote this song called God Shut the Planet Down, and I realized it, 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 it makes people mad, and I don't really care. Come on. So, here we go. Now I'll play a nice, pretty song for y'all. Amen. Some of y'all like, wait, where, where? Come on, put back that first song you did. It was pretty. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll, I'll figure something out here in a minute. <laughs> Yeah. 
I'll just do uh, maybe just one more song, and then, and then get into the message. Get you out of here before 10:30 or so, 11 o'clock. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we want revival, but we want it in an hour and a half to talk about revival. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get you out of here in peace and time. Amen. Oh, you put it up on the board. Oh, that's Revelation 11 6. Can you put 18 7 for a second? Yeah. 18 7. 17, excuse me. Revelation 18 17. Yeah. I'm going to slow that down. You <laughs> have to get more coffee in that section of the world. <laughs> Yeah. I'll do coffee. Can you imagine me on caffeine? Oh, no. Oh, my. No, 18, chapter 18, verse 17. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not for you guys. Okay, hold on. This is a different verse. Yeah, there we go. In one hour, such great wealth has been brought to ruin. One hour. Every sea captain and all who travel by the ship, the sailors, and all who earn their living from the sea will stand far off. God's going to shut the planet down. So um, I want to do the song for you. You know, there I was. Uh, you know, I'll do, a, I'll do an acoustic song first. Let's, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do a nice pretty song for y'all, all right? Can I unplug this? Is it unplugged? Is no, it, it's unplugged, yeah. Okay. He taught me how to play guitar today, so I'm going to try to play a song for y'all. I think you got this, man. But he's, he's a little bit taller than I am, so... You don't mind, I'm going to do a little adjustment. And, Go ahead. Uh, I got to have the little metal thing, you know what I'm saying? That's it. <laughs> that, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah, there you go. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, 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 know he, I know he likes wires, but I, I, I like I like wireless stuff, hey, amen? Because I like to jump around, you know what I'm saying? Come on. You know, you got, you got, you know, you got to get, you know, hell up somebody. Y'all y'all with me? Y'all around? Y'all okay? <laughs> Uh, 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 something really pretty. Oh, wait, 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 something's wrong, something's wrong. Yeah, that's, that's more like it, right? Yeah. Do something pretty. Yeah. She's like, oh, my God, something too loud. Just, there's something really pretty to bring in the presence of the Lord, right? <laughs> That's the first time some of y'all even moved in church tonight. What the heck? Wow. 
boxes. The zero got hooked up with that one. Preach for 15 minutes. That's all I've been here for the last three months. Why can't you be like Eddie? Preach like 15 minutes. <laughs> he said, You come to my church, you gotta preach for like 45. I said, Pastor, I'll make stuff up. I will, I, I'll do it, man. I'll make it. I'll preach for 45 minutes. Come on, somebody, I can do it. <laughs> so, this when I got home last year, I was sitting in my chair. More kind of like this. I'm going to sit since y'all sit. I was sitting there like this. And I was thinking about my life. I was thinking about this whole pandemic thing. And, you know, everybody's like, you're going to die. Well, you're really smart. Um, but anyway, um, you know, I like to make two people who didn't die out of all of humanity so far. The odds of you dying are you're going to die. So um, anyway, so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, you know what, God? I still got some fighting. I still got some preaching. I still got some fighting. And then I, and then I thought to myself, you know what? I'm kind of like David, and you might be liar. And so I wrote this song called Still Got Some Fighting Me. And then this song right now, man, is almost, it's like number one on our new project right now called God Shut the Planet Down. And I want to play the song for you. Y'all you mind me? Yeah. Y'all mind me? We even made a shirt for it. I got to find the shirt for it. It's somewhere in, somewhere in my pile right here. It's in my pile. <laughs> Oh, God, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, it's all falling apart. Here we go. See? It says, still got some fighting me in the front, right? Yeah. And, and then on the back, it says, I'm kind of like David. You might be liar. Why is this on the front? So the enemy can see you coming. Yeah, that's right. Why is this on the back? Because after I smash scrub head, amen, and knock him down and beat him up, come on, somebody, amen, he gets to see me walking away. That's what he gets to read, amen. Come on, somebody, amen. Yeah. Here we go. This is off my new CD called God Shut the Planet Down. <laughs> I'm getting excited, amen. Can you, can you imagine me on meth? Amen. <laughs> Lord, Jesus. <laughs> I wait if 
about 62 pounds when the Lord found me. And he delivered me. Come on. I, I tell people this now when we get around in drug addicts and people that do drugs and they, sometimes they walk up to me and like, hey dude, you want to do some drugs? I'm like, dude, I'm on something right now, bro. <laughs> I mean, the stuff I got has been wiring me out, man, for years. I said, like this, check this out, watch it. I did one line of Jesus, and I haven't been back to the dope dealer's house in 30 years. <laughs> Still high off of it, bro. You want some? I'll give it to you. <laughs> Here we go. Fresh and hot. Come on. Fresh and hot. 
I seek the Lord and ask him, what does he want me to preach? Because he gives me a message for the body of Christ, amen? And so um, I, I'm always overwhelmed with what God gives me because what God gives me, he ministers to me, right? Right. And if he doesn't minister to me, it's probably not from God. Come on. That's how I feel. So I got to have something that, that speaks to me. So I got a title for my message if you were tired of taking it, because some people are tired of taking it, amen? You know what I'm saying? Here we go. The title of my message is, I must trust in the things I don't see in order to be effective in the things I do see. Oh, that was a good amen part right there. I, 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 hold on, I'll help you out with that one. Here, here. This right here is my amen stick. Amen. It goes up, you say amen. It comes down, you say on a stick. It goes up, amen. It comes down, you say on a stick. Okay, you got it. Here we go. Now, Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2 is very interesting. I've read this scripture multiple times before, but it never spoke violence to me like it did this time. And it says, set your minds on things above, but not on the things of this earth. Now, you have to understand first one part of that. He says, set whose mind? Your mind. Set your mind. Watch this. God ain't going to have nothing to do with that one. It's your responsibility to set your mind on things above. You know how people are like, well, God would just do this for me. If God would just do this, no, God ain't going to do that. He wants you to set your minds and things above. So I thought to myself, what does the word set even mean? So I Googled it, man. I love Google. You, you can Google anything, man. How to make a pot roast in a toaster. <laughs> Google it, amen. Google it. And so I Googled the word, amen, set. The word set means to be put in a specific place. <clears throat> and to be given a position. So when you accept Christ, amen, he puts you in a specific place called the kingdom of heaven. And then he gives you a position. Amen? Now, I don't know what your position is. I know what mine is. Come on, somebody. I got a big mouth, and I'm planning on using it for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. amen? But then I said, Lord, how do you set your mind? And I, I, I don't know about you. I was waiting for that like fiery bush to happen, amen. You know what I'm saying, amen. amen. But that, and then I was waiting on a big, you know, big booming voice come out of heaven, like, Eddie, the way that you set your mind is. But that didn't happen either. Still, small voice came out of heaven to me and said, Eddie, the way that you set your mind is the same way you set your alarm clock. He said the problem is too many Christians, and hey, watch this, are hitting the snooze button on Jesus. Double snooze on Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. You got to set your alarm clock just like, hey, you got to set that clock in here. Here we go. Now, I, I, I wondered, where is, the, uh, where is the snooze button in Scripture? Because everything you want to know is found in the Bible. You know that? Does everybody know that? Everybody realize it? Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you, I don't know about it. I, 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 I talked about this story. Maybe it won't trick people out. But I had 13 pounds of dope in my closet. This is how I got my, my first book deal with TBN. Went all over the world. Sold out three times. Come on, somebody. Amen. amen. Story about my life, amen. And people love this story, so I'm going to tell you. So there I was, amen. It was 1.30 in the morning, and I, and I was smoking. Come on, I, I ain't, ain't right. Come on, somebody ain't right. But they were about this big right here, and I, mean, I was like, <laughs> I mean, I was in it, man. I, 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 was, I was in it. And I was flipping through the channels, and I came across TBN. Now, I had never seen TBN before, and I had never seen no preachers. I didn't grow up with Jesus. We didn't have no cool by y'all around my table. Come on, somebody. I mean, we just didn't have it. We, we, I, we were real heathens. We didn't even pray for our food. Come on, somebody. I mean, it was real. And so all of a sudden, this guy, man, I turned on, and his name was Dwight Thompson. Old hell school fire. And he was like, you better get your life out of Jesus. Yeah. And I was like, man, you need to smoke some of this and chill out. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he said to me, you, smoking that joint. God wants to use you to preach. You can't use you like that. Put that down. I'll teach you the camera. <laughs> yeah, I was tripping out now. Hello, somebody. But curiosity brought me back, and there I was, watching this guy again. But I was smoking a little differently this time. I was more like... <laughs> I was intently looking, man. I really was. And that guy said, I already told you one time, put that down. God can't use you like that. I turned the TV off. I went to bed. I got up the next day, and this is what I said. Well, you know, how people always tell you, you know, anything you want to know is found in the Bible. Seeking you a fire, knocking the door open. So I figured I'd do a drive-by on Jesus, amen. You know what that is? That's when you take your Bible, you flip it open, you don't look. 
You point at it. Now, whatever it says you're going to do. Now, you want to keep that in the New Testament. Because that Old Testament is my crucified little dog. You know what I'm <laughs> but I did ask the Lord, show me where it says I can't stoke no dope. I pointed my finger. When I came up and looked at it, I came to first Peter 5 8 and it said like this. Therefore, be of the soul of mine. Say what? That's in the Bible, dude. I mean, I was, you couldn't put that in the Hollywood. Come on, somebody, amen. That's too good to be me in a show. Come on, somebody. Amen. And then I read the rest of it. For the devil roams around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. I took that dope back and dope his ass. True story, Pastor. Put it in the garbage can. <laughs> Buddy, last night I was watching TV. And that preacher on that TV said, I was going to be a preacher and I need to stop smoking dope. And so I'm bringing this back and get right with Jesus. You know what that guy said to me? <laughs> uh, uh, you, you weren't smoking my dope at the TV was talking to you, amen? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this, this lady right here said, acid, man. You must have She was a hippie back in the day right there. That chick right there, man. Don't act all innocent with me. I check her out. Yeah, she's like, she's like, I'm gangster. Y'all don't even know it, man. You know? <laughs> She like smash gas on people and then call somebody. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to know where was the snooze scripture? Because everything you want to know is down in the Bible. So Ephesians 5.14, he says like this, Ephesians 5.14, he says, wake up, sleeper. Arise from the dead and let Christ shine on you. And then it says, so be careful how you live your life, not as unwise, but as wise. For the days are evil. Yeah. Well, I want to let you know something. That was written before Corona showed up. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Hello. Mm -hmm. Come on. The days of evil before Corona showed up. Right. And they're still evil. But be wise how we get our lives. Yeah. Here we go. Everybody say page two. Page two. I got 55 more to go. We'll get done. <laughs> Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2. Are you a snorter back there? Is she? <laughs> Any of you snorters? Who's the snorter? Who's the snorter? Give me a snort. Come on. Come on. They're your people, Pastor. I should have been a comedian. I'd make more money, I think. Galatians. Lord, Jesus, help us all. Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified with Christ. No longer I that live, but Christ who lives inside of me. In the life that I live now, I live it by faith. See, it's not what I see. i got to trust in the things I don't see so I can become effective in the things I do see. Yeah. You see, before I met Christ, I was affected by everything that I seen. Amen. It affected me in ways. Let me tell you something. You don't want nobody going down. Hello? Right. But then I accepted Christ, and I realized it's not what I see anymore. It's the things that are unseen that I need to be uh, directed by. I need, to, I need to walk in those things. Yeah. Here we go. 2 Corinthians 4.18. While we look not at the things which are seen, 2 Corinthians 4.18, but the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are unseen are eternal. So I had to ask myself this question that day when I read that scripture, am I a temporary Christian? Come on. Am I a temporal Christian or am I an eternal Christian? So you know what I did? I Googled it. <laughs> when you Google the word Temporal, and this is what it means. Now, I, I didn't write this stuff. I found this in a dictionary, and I know how to use a dictionary. I went back to college, come on, somebody. <laughs> I did. I got my doctorate degree. Yes, ma'am, I did. Come on, somebody. Amen. And they teach you how to use a dictionary. <laughs> Hello. And I was going back in the day when Google didn't know everything. Come on, somebody. <laughs> now, Google knows everything except how to get saved. Come on. Hello. Here we go. Now, the word temporal means pertaining to or concerned with this present world as opposed to spiritual affairs. So the temporal Christian is not interested in the kingdom of things. They're only interested in what they can get out of this place here. Now that doesn't sound like a good thing. I mean Moses was definitely not a temporal Christian when Moses said, I deny the riches of Pharaoh. And he got in the mud pits with the people of God to build a brick. Right. 
Now, I'd rather get in the mud pits with the people of God and build one brick for the kingdom of God than to build bricks for the pharaohs of this world. Amen. Here we go. I, I, I got to end. I'm getting... Amen. Amen. <laughs> you always get the biggest amen towards the end. Hey, amen, brother. Hurry up. I got to go. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So, um, the year 2020 was an emotional coaster ride for a lot of people. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm, Everybody was affected by it, unless, unless, you're still in the woods right now eating deer somewhere. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta go set traps tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? There are people right now that don't even know that this right, happened. Right, right. And watch this. We probably wouldn't even know that it was happening really that bad if we just shut the TV off. Come on, come on. Stop watching the news. Please. Every day. Oh my God, dude. 15 people went into Walmart and 3,000 people died. It's crazy. Crazy. Here we go. Now, I asked the Lord about 2020. So for those of you that wear glasses, including me sometimes, so I went to my doctors and I'm like, Dad, they're jacking with these Bibles. They're making them small, man. It's ticking me off. She said, Eddie, babe, don't worry about it. Try these 175s. I said, oh, no, I can see. She said, don't worry about it. You'll be all right. Want 125s? You got 125s? Yeah, 125. Now, I asked the Lord, what about 2020? And 2020, this is what it means. It means to see with clarity. And then I said, Lord, what happened in 2020? Now, I'm, I'm going to take you to a place, and I know some of you are like, uh, 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 uh. hold on and listen, and let the Spirit of the Lord speak to you. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. The Bible says that uh, Elijah, amen, uh, after he had this battle with the, uh, 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 the prophets of Baal, amen, that, that, that he, Ahab went back to his wife, and his wife's name was Jezebel. For you fellas in the house, you meet some chick named Jezebel. Run! <laughs> Not a popular name around women. No, Here we go. So the Bible said that she said, I'm going to kill you the same way that you killed the prophets. And you're going to die by tomorrow. And the Bible says that Elijah went and hid underneath the broom tree. Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. This is what happened. He went underneath the broom tree. He was like, Jesus, that crazy lady got to kill me. That's what it says. Right. That's what it says. So where did he hide? He hid underneath that broom tree. Here we go. I'm going to take you to a place now. Watch this. So uh, 2020 means to see with clarity, right? So when I asked the Lord, show me some clarity on this. You know what he said? He said, Eddie, I'm going to show you what happened for 2020. The character. Now, I, people sometimes say the spirit of Jezebel. But uh, if you can show me that in the Bible, okay. But I, I can't find the spirit of Jezebel. But I can find the character of Jezebel. And here's the four components, the characters of a Jezebel. Watch this. Intimidation, takeover, doubt. What do you think the last one would be? Fear. 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 So most people ask you when that happened, where'd they go? They went and hid in their houses. What's a house made of? Wood. Where'd that wood come from? A tree. Where was Elijah and us? I'm going to need that tree. Some people were praying, God, take us off, man. You're right for us. They weren't thinking about the people that would go to hell. Amen. Come on. That's what I believe happened in 2020. The character of Jezebel was loosed upon the earth. Y'all with me? Yeah. Now, the Bible says right here in, I think, verse 5, he says that the angel of the Lord came down, tapped him on the shoulder, and said, Get up, eat of this bread, and drink of this water. He eats the bread, drinks the water, and the Bible says that he went right back to sleep. Typical man, eat, drink, sleep. Come on, son. Sister, testify. Amen. <laughs> but the Bible says in verse 7, amen, that watch this. This time the angel of the Lord came down and tapped him on the shoulder. But this time he said something different. Now, you want to write this down. You want to put this in your memory bank. You want to make sure that you keep this in your frontal lobe. He said, eat of this bread, drink of this water, for your journey is too long for you. Now, John 6.32, let's find out about this bread and this water. 
Jesus said, what did Moses that giving you the bread from heaven? But it was my Father who gave you the bread from heaven. And this bread gives you life. Yeah. Gives you life. Wow. So Elijah ate the bread. But then they said, Jesus, give us this bread. And Jesus said, what? I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me, amen, he'll never hunger again. And he'll never thirst. So the Bible says that after Elijah ate of that bread and drank of that water, what happened? Anybody know? He gave supernatural strength to go 200 miles to the mountain of God. You see, this word right here, amen, is our strength in the pandemic. This right here is your strength when your husband leaves you. This is your strength, amen, when things are not going so well, right? Here. The bread and the living water, amen, that's what we need to feed on. Come on, somebody. No, no, that is good. I, I know that's good right there, amen, because watch this. I got a journey. Come on, somebody. You got a journey, too. And without that bread and that living water in our life, amen, being consumed, your journey is going to be longer than it had to be. Oh, we're getting quiet on him. I got a hand, amen. I got a hand, amen. I got one more scripture for you, amen. I told you my sermon's only 15 minutes. But my talking's a little bit longer. But it'd be 15 minutes on the sermon, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all be all right. The whole world messed up, amen. All right, so here we go. Philippians 4 8. Now, you ever meet them people that don't shut up? I mean, it's like they got the supernatural strength in them. It's like they take air through their eyeballs. They just don't stop. And all of a sudden, finally, they stop. Well, the Bible says in Philippians 4, 8, it says, oh, yeah. <laughs> finally. It's like, it's like Jesus is saying, finally, you shut up for a minute. Listen. Yeah. And he says, what? Whatever is true, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything excellent or praiseworthy, think upon these things. You see, we weren't wired to think about all those things of the world. We were wired to think of the things of the kingdom of God. And let me tell you something. You can do it. You can think on purpose. You don't have to have right. rental space for the enemy in your mind. That's right. You can get rid of that. I call it stinking thinking. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, hey, like, 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 I, I know y'all gonna freak out, but don't freak out. I, mean, I, I ain't robbed nobody in 30 years. That's how I know I'm saved. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I ain't robbed nobody. Come on. I, I'm just telling you the truth, baby, man. Come on, hello. But we were walking in a, in a rest in, in, in a, 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 a superstore one day, right? and me and my wife, and this lady came around the corner, and, and she, she had her purse on the top, on the top, on the, on the top part, you know what I'm saying? And it was wide open like that. And then she just walked away like this, you know? I see I grabbed my wife and said, honey, let's get out of the Let's get out of the honey. She said, what's wrong, baby? Let's get out of the Let's get out of the She said, baby, what, 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 why are you acting like that? I said, that woman's purse is open like that. Do you realize, come on, something? that woman could look over at me and say, did you take that out of my purse? And just start accusing. She could have said that. Come on. Now my wife said, honey, why do you think like that? I said, baby, I'm sorry. But I see things that you don't see. Yep. And I think it's things that sometimes I go, oh, Lord, you thank you, God, I wasn't there. Come on, somebody. Amen. So don't think it's strange, amen, that God told us to think about things that are lovely, just, and mild, but praiseworthy. Whatever, amen, think upon those things. Y'all with me tonight? Yeah. All right, I got to end. Amen. Some of y'all didn't say I'm a stick. Now I got to do it all over again. All over again. All right, so before we end, let me, uh, hey, can y'all play some worship music or uh, it's like a piano guy can come up here or something? Yeah, yeah. Huh. that was lovely, wasn't it? Uh, well, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Just somebody coming up and just play some. While he's, while he's making his way, remember that T-shirt that we have? Now, I came out with that new book called Dare to Dream When They Say No. Dare to Dream When They Say No. You see, 13 years ago, God told me to build a missions college. I didn't have one penny. You know what I told God? I ain't got no money. You know what God told me? I didn't ask you any money. I asked you to build a college. So I said, okay. He told me, dare to dream, dare to dream, dare to dream. And then he started telling me, watch, follow that dream. I'm in Florida. You know what they do? They called me up and said this to me, man. They said, Eddie, you can't build your college there. Find another place to build it. I started crying. I literally started weeping. And the Lord said to me, Eddie, look up. I was like, Lord, I'm tired of looking up. No, I was. I was tired. Come on, son. When you deal with zoning all the time, amen, when you fight against the 
And I said, Lord, I'm tired of looking up. You know what he said to me? Eddie, look up. When I looked up, this is what I see. And man, what does that say? It's a street sign that says, follow that dream. Now, how in the world can that ever happen? That's a street sign. It says, follow that dream. Let me tell you something. Some of y'all tonight, you need to follow your dream. You need to get your dream back. You need to create dreams. You need you, you understand what I'm saying? You need to do something for the kingdom of God. Don't, don't let anybody tell you that you can't. Because you know what? A thousand no's. One God's yes, that's all I need. Come on. Two months later, they called me up and said, you know what? We made a mistake, man. You can build there. We opened up our college last year. We had our first graduates, amen, last year. We got our second graduation coming up this year. We're building missionaries, amen. Building men for successful living. Developing disciples, launching leaders, and affecting nations. Amen. All because God gave me a dream. Come on, somebody. Amen. These are at our table, amen. Make sure you pick them up. Oh, and then we got these. Oh, we had a fire at our college. Yeah, it's pretty bad. My wife was freaking out. But, but they were able to get there, amen, and they were able to, you know, shut the fire out. It was in the laundry room. And so I was going to put a fire extinguisher system in our building, but they wanted like $60,000. And I just said, I don't have $60,000, so I built it anyway, opened it up, and now I need a fire extinguisher system. And so uh, this guy came over a week after that, and he says to me, uh, hey, man, I, I love your school. And I said, what do you do for a living? You know what he said? I put fire extinguisher systems in. <laughs> so I said, are you a Christian company? He said, oh, yes. And then don't give me the heathen price. <laughs> So he gave me the price of $15,000. I already ordered it. I ain't got the $15,000. Watch what? But I've raised $9,000 of it so far. These are a collectible album of God Shut the Planet Down. Yeah, a vinyl album. Amen? There's only 500 of these made. There's no more. These are $35 at the table. Okay? If you want one, put it on your wall. I don't know. We got these cool little hats right here. These are selling like crazy, Pastor. You like hats, Pastor? Happy birthday. Now, I'll give you things for your birthday. Everybody else, I love you. Amen. Anyway. <laughs> Listen, I want to pray with you. Amen. Like, oh, I got this shirt right here. I love this shirt right here. This, this, this should be for this lady right here. Like, hey, what's up? <laughs> oh, look, here she got one of it. <laughs> Listen, I want to pray with you. I know it's getting late. Y'all bow your heads and close your eyes for me, please. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for tonight. And thank you for the music and the message, Father God. If there's somebody in here tonight, amen, that doesn't know you as their Savior, I want to give that opportunity for you to know who Jesus is. If you say, Eddie, that's me in this place, I'm not going to call you to the front. I'm not going to point you out. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I'm going to pray right from the stage. If you say, Eddie, that's me tonight, and I'm ready to give my life to Jesus, would you slip up your hand in the name? Now there might be one that says, he or she's ready. I want to make sure everybody's saved. Thank you for being honest in this place. If you say, Eddie, I don't care how you put your words, tonight's message, that was for me. I need to change the way that I've been thinking. Man. And I know I heard from the Holy Spirit tonight that that was for me. If that's you, again, I'm not going to call you in front. But will you slip up your hand and I may acknowledge that there might be a few in the room? Come on, keep them up. Keep them up for just a second. Keep them up. It's okay. Thank you so much. I see you, God. Thank you. So, Father God, we come before you, Lord, and we just confess. You may put your hands down if you want. God, we need to change the way that we think. We, the world cannot tell us how to think no more. You labeled it out, Father God. You laid it out. And you've given to us the greatest things to think upon, and those are heavenly things. I'm not pitiful, I'm powerful. And thank you, Father God, for what you do, what you did in this place here tonight. And we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Come on, Pastor. Amen.